Hi everyone, I'm Mitch from Circuit Stream. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at how to build your Unity project right to your Quest 2 here, which is particularly helpful if you have a Mac and you can't use Oculus Link, or you just want to run your project right on your device without having to have it tethered to a PC. Let's get started. So we're here in the Unity Hub and we're going to make a new project, but first we want to make sure our Android platform build module is installed. So let's go over to installs here. And I know I'm going to be using this version of Unity here, 2021.3.1. And if you click this cog button here and go to add modules, we can see which modules, which platform modules we currently have installed. And I do in fact have Android build support installed for you, you might see some of these checkboxes that you have to check off and then click install, but mine's all good to go. So I can move on. You can also see it says Android here. That's another way to tell that this particular editor install is ready to build to Android. And this is necessary because the Quest 2 is actually an Android device. So that's the platform we want to build to. So we'll go to projects here and we'll make a new project. We can just make this a 3D URP project here, and I'm going to name this Quest Build. All right, looks good. Let's create this project, and we'll let it do its thing. All right, so we have our fresh new project here, and the first thing we're going to want to do is actually change our build target. So we can go over to build settings here, and in build settings, under this platform area, we can see a list of all of the different build targets we have available. And if we don't have that particular module installed, it is grayed out and we have this option to install it with Unity Hub. For Android, it's not grayed out because remember we installed that module. So that's all good. We can continue on here. This little Unity icon lets us know which platform we are currently switched to. So right now we're on standalone, which is if we wanted to build something to run on Windows on this PC. And we want to switch it to Android. So with Android selected here, we can just say switch platform. And now it's going to go and re-import everything that is within this project over again. It has to re-import it all for Android. So if you have a big project already on the go, it's going to take a while. But if you are starting from scratch, like I am here, it's not going to take too long. Okay, we have our build setting changed over to Android. Let's move on. And what I want to do here is make a very basic VR scene that we can use to confirm that this project is indeed working as intended on the Oculus. So let's get started with that. There's a couple of assets or packages rather that I want to import. And we can do that by going to Window Package Manager. And Package Manager is a tool that's built into Unity that lets you install packages and assets. So if we switch over from In Project, which shows us what we currently have installed in our project, over to Unity Registry, this will show us a whole bunch of things that we can install that are made by Unity. And these are mostly add-ons you can think of for Unity that enable different features that aren't built into the bare bones editor. And we can go over to XR Plugin Management here and click Install. And XR Plugin Management is very important when building a VR application. Basically, XR Plugin Management is what facilitates the, the transfer of data from our VR headset into Unity and makes all that work. So makes things like head tracking work, so we have that installed. Let's set it up really quick before we move on. So we can go into our project settings here. And now we have this XR plugin management area. So let's click that. And under our Android build setting here, so you can see the options change depending on which build target we have selected. Under Android, we want to check off Oculus. And it will go and install our Oculus plugin and allow us to use Oculus VR. All right, so that's installed. If we want to be able to use VR on our PC as well, we would have to check off Oculus here. 
but I think we're okay with just having the Android plugin installed in this case. Next, we want to bring in the XR Interaction Toolkit, which is sort of like a collection of pre-made components and scripts that allows us to quickly create an, a VR experience. So I actually don't see that in the package manager here. And depending on your version of Unity, you might see it show up. Uh, you might have to enable uh, preview packages or pre-release packages here. But in this particular version of Unity, that doesn't seem to be working either. So if neither of those things allow you to see XR Interaction Toolkit, there is a workaround that I can offer. That's what I'm going to do here. You can click the plus and go to Add Package from Git URL. And I'm going to type in an address here, com.unity.xr.interaction.toolkit, all lowercase. I'll hit Enter. And yep, that was right. It is installing our XR Interaction Toolkit package. You should see it just show up in the list with all the other packages, but you know, things don't always work perfectly like that. All right, so basically our Interaction Toolkit is asking us if we want to use the new input system. It actually requires the new input system. So I'm going to say yes, and it'll have to restart the editor and change our project over to the new input system. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. It's not the focus of this video. And I'm just going to say go ahead here as well. OK, we got our new input system changed over. Let's continue on here. Now we want to build a quick VR scene using our Interaction Toolkit. And we can get that started by right clicking in our hierarchy, going to XR, and we're going to make an XR origin action based. And amazingly enough, this is all we actually have to do to get some basic head tracking in. So if you brought this into a scene right now and we built this out, you would be able to look around a scene in VR. But it'd also be cool to get these hands tracking. So let's quickly do that as well. So we can see our main camera here, which is our head. That is tracked with the tracked pose driver component right here. It's getting its position and input here, but our left and right hand controllers, their position and rotation actions are actually blank. So we need to fill those in. So let's go over to Window and Package Manager. And this is a cool little thing that they did with the toolkit. So they included these starter assets. And this contains presets that allow us to quickly fill in all of our actions on our left and right hand. And we can do that by just going to our presets here, picking our left controller, and then on our right controller, picking our right controller presets there. And now, among other things that are outside of the scope of this video, we have our position and rotation actions hooked up, which means we're going to have tracking there. And there's one last thing we need to add to make our hand tracking work. And we just want to go to Add Component, and we want to add an Input Action Manager. So let's add that component. And it's looking for an action asset. And this is another thing that actually just got imported with that starter assets little bundle we brought in. So we can hit plus and hit the little target here. And we only have one input actions in our scene. This is a new input system thing, by the way, input actions. We'll get into it in another video. But let's just bring in that input actions and hook it up. And now, Everything is all hooked together. And now when we start the scene, we should see a representation of our hands um, because of this line renderer and this ray interactor. We're going to basically see, we're going to have lines for hands, basically. Not ideal, but good enough just to make sure that our headset is tracking and our hands are tracking. So let's move on to the actual build settings here. So under File and Build Settings, on our Android platform, if we now go to player settings, there's a few things that we have to set here to make this actually be ready to deploy to our Quest 2. So I'm going to change the company name here to something a bit more unique. I'll call it Mitch Inc. That has a nice ring to it. 
And let's just go through here from top to bottom and I'll just point out what needs to be changed and we'll change it. So a color space, that can be set to linear. Um, OpenGL ES2 actually doesn't support linear, so we have to remove it here. So we're just using OpenGL ES3 as the graphics API. For overwrite default package name, I'm just going to uncheck that so it fills it in with my company name, MitchInc.QuestBuild, project name. So that's all good. For minimum API level, this is an important one. We want to change this to level 29, aka Android 10. For scripting backend, we want to go and change this from mono to IL to C++ here. And we can just do that. Uh, what's next? Target architectures. Right now, this is set to ARM 32-bit, ARM v7. We want to go and change that to 64-bit. For install location, let's change that to automatic. And keep scrolling down here. That looks like that is it. So now we should actually be able to build to the Quest 2. So let's plug this sucker in and see how it works. Actually, before we plug in our headset, we're going to have to take out our phone here, iOS or Android, doesn't matter, and download the Oculus app. And then in the Oculus app, we're going to want to um, connect to our device here. I'll pick the Quest 2. Searching, it looks like it found it. And under here in these headset settings, we want to go to developer mode and make sure that is toggled to on. And that will allow us to hook up to our computer and build applications to it. So when you plug in your Quest 2 to your computer, you get this dialog pop up that says allow USB debugging. And we want to go ahead and allow that. And we also get one for allow access to data. We'll allow that too. And sometimes these messages pop up twice. So we will just allow again. And now our computer should see our Quest 2 and we should be able to build to it. Now when we go to run device here and we click refresh, we should see our Quest 2 pop up here in devices. And if we just click build and run, and we have to name this quests build, we'll save our sample scene, and it should automatically build this out. And as long as our device stays plugged in, it will copy it to the device and run it. So when this is done building, all we have to do is put on our headset, and we should see that application running right on the headset, no PC required. All right, sure enough, we're here in our default Unity Skybox. This is just our blank scene. And we got our hands tracking as represented by those line renderers. Very cool. Our app works. So uh, this app obviously auto ran because we went to build and run. But what if we want to close it and run it a second time? So let's quit this. And so if we look at our app library here, uh, we don't see our app appear anywhere. There's a whole bunch of apps, but these are all things that were installed with the Oculus Store. So how do we get to our own stuff? Well, if we click this all drop down here, the all is a bit of a lie. It might as well say all Oculus installed apps. Um, we need to go down to unknown sources, and here we can see our Unity builds, so we can just Hit that quest build, and it should open up, made with Unity, and here's our scene again. So that's how you can launch it a second time, and it will stay on your device. So that's about it, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. That's how you can build a VR project and get it running on your headset, untethered from a PC. Good to go. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next one.